Hello everyone, I'm making this video for my testimony and I hope that it will help many and I hope that it will encourage many also and um, uh, I just hope that you will bear with me for a few moments. My name is, uh, is Rochelle and I live in Sweden. I am, a, I am from Philippines so hello for all my Kabayans out there and to all the people, my brethren in Christ. Um, before I would start, I would like to, to share to you a verse. And those who know your name will put their trust in you. For you, Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. That is in Psalms 9, 10. And uh, before I would start my, my testimony, this is a word that I would like to, to, to give to you all. Uh, in Psalm 66, 16, Come and hear all you who fear God, and I will declare what he has done for my soul. So, yeah, we will start this, okay? Uh, first, I would like to start uh, a free worship because I'm used to this. start with my uh, testimony. Um, I hope that this testimony will help many, will encourage many as I have said in the beginning of the video. Um, I grew up in a family. I am the eldest. My parents are separated. I come from the Philippines, from Baguio City. So, uh, and um, I am um, now living here in Sweden, I am married and I have two children. Uh, my testimony starts with, my, my father is a Catholic and my mom is a, is a Christian. She is a, she is a member of the Church of Christ in Philippines. But um, of all those years, I knew also about Jesus and, and about the faith. 
and I had it, I had no doubt in it, but there is no such faith in me when I was so little. My faith is not that strong yet that I have now. So, my mother, I had not good relationship with her because she, she, she beat me up and she say, she, I mean, she beat me up. She never spoken good things to me. I never seen seen the fruit of the spirit. No, there's no love. There's no joy. There's no kindness in her, and um, uh, it just sat in my mind and in my heart, and I grew up hating her. And my father is um, he is a li he is loving in that way and caring, but he has uh, he, he he is very violent in words. Uh, he curse all he curse and swear and um, say many many things that are not really appropriate and uh, when I was eight eight and uh, twelve i I've been molested by my cousins and um, when I was eighteen I've been uh, I've been uh, I've been into rape and um, I became a slave for since March when I was supposed to, to become to turn 18. Um, someone enticed me because I have I have a cousin where she has friends in the province and I met that guy and uh, he took me in his place and locked me there since March to May in 2003. And uh, and uh, this had caused me tremendous pain also. And the other stuff is that uh, I had a first love where we had a good life together, we had good relationship, and then suddenly jealousy had uh, jealousy had uh, had uh, come upon him. So he left me. He left me. He did not say goodbye to me. So I took all those hatred and things in me, and um, I at at. Ten, when I was ten, I also I became also a, a product of of uh, of uh, sexual impurity. I was uh, I, I I thought that I was a boy, so I turned myself into lesbianism. I thought that I that, that it's okay. I thought that that it's normal, but it was not. So so I I think from from being lesbian, I changed when I was fifteen. So. So yeah, and then uh, and then because of all the hurt that I have had, uh, I indulged in many things. I indulged in prostitution. I indulged in smoking, drinking, partying, hanging out with friends. And I thought that and and my lips were filled with, with filthiness and it's filled with with garbage, you know. And those garbage had stuck up in piles. And uh, I thought that there's no there's no God or God must not be alive or He must not be seeing me. And uh, so um, when in two, in in two thousand uh, uh, I met a man, a Swedish guy, and uh, and uh, he, I got married. But my father did not release his blessing to, to me. So. Uh, for me, it didn't matter then. I just got married because I thought that maybe when I'm gonna get married, I would forget my first love. I would forget everything, and everything would be okay. And uh, this, uh, this, and my ex said to me that uh, you will be all right. I will take care of you, and blah 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 and blah blah blah. But it didn't go that way. Cause when I went to Sweden, he was drinking. He was abusive in words. And it's really hurting. It's really, really hurting. So at the so at the same time, I'm struggling with my trauma and things like that. And and um, I got and uh, my and I got pregnant also. So so we bring our child here in Sweden, and uh, we bring my son here in Sweden. And uh, uh, a few years later, I got a. Uh, I got a child, my daughter, and um, but our relationship is like 
it's not it's not like husband and wife supposed to be. It's just like it's just like I'm I felt like I'm just living there at home and I I just felt like like I don't feel like a wife simply. Uh, because I did because I don't hear good words from him, I don't nothing. There's no there's no emotional feelings and kindness. So uh, in two thousand, so recently in two thousand ten, uh, I met my uh, I met a friend uh, on the baptism of my children. I met a woman and she introduced me to Bible study. Although I said that ah, that's nothing for me. So but but she 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 never gave up. You know, like she keeps messaging me. Come on, come on, you 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 must come, you must come. And so at the end I gave up. So I I went I went there and she's she's actually the godmother of my children. And um, so I went I went there in Bible studies and I've learned many things. You know, in, in the beginning my flesh was really resisting and it's like, Arr! you know, like I don't want to hear it. I don't I'm, I can't. And it's it's difficult to be to be righteous. It's difficult to to be difficult to do this because I'm just human and you know my flesh was always on the way and I'm so hard headed and uh, on those years I didn't notice that I am already experiencing depression and trauma stress so like at the year of 2011 and or 12 I think um, I ended up Talking to a psychiatrist, uh, to a psychologist, not psychiatrist, psychologist. Um, they are just there to talk to you. You know, like, like if you have a, if you have some troubles in your heart and you don't have a problem, you don't know how to take it out. Like the psychologist just sits in front of you and just listen. It's like they are your wall. You you just throw your ball to them and they receive your ball and you just like listen to all the things you you say. And try to make you think what are the things that are positive about you or negative about you. And I felt it was boring because she's not that really talking to me, like like not a real conversation because she just listen to me. So while I was under pressure of depression, I uh, I uh, how you say I take medications because I could not sleep, I have anxiety, I cannot, I just can't do nothing, you know, I, I felt helpless, so, so uh, the church was trying to pray for me, they tried to encourage me, but they don't even know how to deal with me, you know, they don't know what I'm going through, because I didn't even dare to say, to tell them, and, uh, uh, in 2012, I told I told my ex, uh, no 2011 under that under that year also I told my ex that I I I can't live with him anymore. I I just can't because I don't love him and I don't love him and that that I'm so tired that I I don't feel any any love. So he said that we would try to work it out. So we tried to, but it didn't work. It didn't work and. Um, because he's still, uh, he's still the same. He still say the same things over and over. Like he's still cursing. And um, uh, in 2012, when my I have a, I have a friend. She got married, and on that mar in that wedding, I met a man who whom whom I thought I thought was uh, was. Uh, whom I thought were really liked me, and it was indeed he. He liked me, and and if, and because of my my mar my divorce was still on process. We have one year to think about the the processing period under the processing period. Uh, I indulged I indulged in a relationship with this man, and <clears throat> and uh, because I was still in uh, in trauma. Uh, and in stress and depression, this man became my my running, I mean my running wall. You know, he's like I found comfort in him, and in my understanding, it was right, but it was not. And uh, my ex uh, 
spoke many things to my friend and Misha and and things got worse, they got hurt and I got hurt and indeed even if even if I would I would defend myself that that the divorce is on process, it still means that I'm still in bondage with him as as a wife, husband and wife. So it doesn't mean that I am divorced from him. So I was committing adultery at that time. And uh, and and on those moments, uh, I really know I really took myself I took myself far from people. I distanced myself from from the church. I distanced myself from those people that who cared for me. And uh, and I remember what happened to me. I remember the. I mean, I rem I I still remember how painful it was to to remember the moments when I was eight and I was molested, when I was twelve I got molested again, my mother's behavior to me, uh, those words that have spoken to me, and uh, when I was eighteen when I got raped, and my first love who have hurt me tremendously, it all stuck in my heart, you know. And I felt so, so helpless and I felt wrecked. I mean, I felt so broken inside of me. I could pretend smiling and laughing and my love was crackling, you know. So, so, you know, when someone's love is crackling, you could really know that they're pretending because that's not the laughter from the heart. So my laughter was like that. It was like crackling, slap, you know. And then... Um, um, I I felt I, I don't know where to turn to. It's like so every time I feel happy, I was like take the medicine. Uh, I fell asleep, and when I'm so sad, take the happy pill. When I'm so so uh, feeling depressed, I feel like it. It seems like I see all things black and white. And uh, but on that same year also, it's like I am all I am also in the Bible study. So those years were like, were like the, the, I believe that I could call it like a breakthrough because, because uh, it was so difficult for me. And um, uh, when I, when I, uh, you know, I've been uh, married to my ex for six years because I came to Sweden in 2007. But uh, although in 2012, when I, when uh, when the divorce was still in process, and uh, in 2013 I decided to go home to the Philippines. I I I really uh, so I I I I searched for my first love and I forgave him, and I spoke to him what he have done to me that it caused me tremendous trauma, it caused me tremendous pain for many years, and he said to me. How come you could not for, could forget those things those were ten years ago? And I said that's the thing because you have you have because all of the things you have promised to me and told me, I've kept them securely in my heart, and it and now I've decided to let you go. I've decided to be free from you, and uh, I've even told to my parents to my father what had happened to me. I've told my father that I've been molested by my cousin. And uh, and uh, and at last, I also forgave forgave uh, the the man who have uh, who have raped me, because even if I would go back to to the court and and fight for my life, it will not do me any good anymore because it's been a long time. And what shall I do? What can it bring to me? Then I I. I just lifted all everything to God. I just surrendered everything to God. And um, so, and finally, I I released my I released a serious forgiveness to my mother, and as and I search every one of those whom I remember. I searched them even in Facebook, in you know even in internet. I I found them. I found my old classmates whom whom I've hurt, I've cursed, and those who have hurt me and mobbed me when I was little, those who bullied me and kicked me, I, 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 I asked for forgiveness to them and I released my forgiveness to them. 
and it healed me instantly. You know that my depression was gone. Like I can't, I don't even understand after that how I could take those medications. They they taste bitter. They taste awful. They, I don't know. They was, and and I couldn't understand that I took those medications. It made me like a zombie. And so God was working in me. I prayed, Lord, just help me, cause I can't do this on my own. So I always remember that that the the verse that says that that God will not remember them any the the sins of the people anymore when you seriously seek Him, you know, and uh, that He will make you white as snow. And I took that the, that word that it was for me. I hold to the word it was for me. And there was a there was a Bible verse also that that uh, I always uh, I always uh, uh, spoke to the Lord while I was in depression that and uh, and God is reminding me about who I, what I have done and I said this was in Psalms ten you know if you if all of you have read about Psalms ten it's really powerful because you can see that. That God is a God is really just God, you know. It says, "Why do you stand afar off, O Lord? Why do you hide in times of trouble?" I thought that God was was. Uh, I thought that that in my life I'm so alone. I felt that God had left me by those times. But um, indeed, it's just it's just that because of my wickedness and my and the things that I have done that I. The, the things that I have done has made me far from the Lord, you know, because it is written that that our sins can can make us, uh, I mean, it it can make us far from the Lord, you know, and uh, uh, I felt so very, I felt so very, so very bad those those moments because. Yeah, that verse that says that that our sins separated us from the love of God and or separated us from the Lord, yeah. And uh, and the Lord tests the righteous, but the wicked and the one who loves violence, his soul hates. So I was feeling like, oh Lord, please don't take your spirit from me. Just please help me and show me how I can change my ways and how I can be healed from this. So. So suddenly I get healed from all of it, and uh, there was one thing also that I was thinking about. Yeah, like um, 2013, finally I broke up with this guy. I'm I've committed adultery, and um, and uh, I, but after that I met also one man, one guy, and I didn't know that he was he that. I thought that he was divorced because that's what he said. So I committed again at another kind of adultery again. So, you know, I always think that that we are not called we are not called by God to. Uh, I mean, God does not condemn us even if we do such things. But when you are aware of the word of God, you must know how to separate yourself from the world. And you must know when the sin is coming. You know, God said to 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 Cain before he would before he was thinking to kill his brother. He said, uh, "If you do it well, uh, be careful because the because the sin is at your door and it uh, and it wants to pray for your and it wants to take your your soul." He says there in Genesis. And maybe you have to look it up for yourself. After all, all of you must uh, must test every spirit. So I um, I was so uh, I was so feeling feeling so uh, bad, and um, I told the Lord, please help me. And uh, and uh, at the end, I I break I break that guy off. And I gave up to the Lord everything. I said, Lord, just help me. This time, if there is a man that who, who will accept you and will love you, then maybe that's, then that is the guy that you have prepared for me. So I was married. 
to my ex in the, in six years, and I was I was released in the seventh year. And you know that that in Leviticus, I believe it is in Leviticus chapter that that the seventh year is uh is a is the year of freedom because it means that from the in the seventh year they uh, all of those who are lending money they have to release their credit that those who have borrowed from them doesn't owe anything anymore and seven is also a sabbath and that is a sabbath year so it's like i felt so good because it's just now i noticed that that god had really re released me from the bondage of the enemy and from the bondage of the things that i have i have exposed myself and of course i couldn't blame my ex for not being a kind man to me but he also has his own problems you know so he, he might he is not aware of what he has done to me i cannot judge him and i cannot blame him because what happens to him he does not he's not aware of it and no one in this world that uh, that does not believe i mean those who are unbelievers they cannot they are underestimating the spirit world so those who are experiencing those things they, they are not aware that they are harming people they, are, they don't know that they are hurting people and they don't know that they behave so bad so those moments i'm so i'm so happy and on and in 2000 2000, I think 2014. Yeah, I've met a man, and and this man, uh, when we met, I I my mind was so twisted. I thought that he would be just like all other men, you know. Mm, I judged him, but um, he showed me how he treated me well. He never touched me, you know. He is very kind. And loving, we met in March, uh, 20, March uh, 24, in 2014, and this man had, uh, uh, this man, he's so kind and um, uh, and uh, and on that and on I think on that week he kissed me and I said to the Lord, No, Lord, I must not be swayed away by his kiss. I must be swayed away. When he accepts you, when he says he, when he says that he's willing to, to, to have you in his life. So the next day I said to this man, uh, "Do you know God?" And he said, "Yes." And do you know Jesus? Yes, he said. Do you want him to be your, his? To be, do you want him to be your Lord and Savior? And he said yes. And you know this man, I didn't knew that. And and just in one day he became Christian. And it's so amazing. And I said to him, do you want to follow with me? So we went into a nearest church in a Pentecostal church. And there is a prayer room there. It's open for everyone. So we went there and prayed. And I'm so amazed because, because the Lord moved. The Lord moved. And I was like, oh God, is this it? And I was not, just ex I was not really expecting anything else from this man. I just, I just know that that God that God is with us by that moment and few and then in months after the Lord just one month after he proposed to me and I said how could you get married how could you dare to marry a woman like me I've done all those things because you know I've told him uh, things about me I've witnessed to him so how could you dare to marry me I have two children I am not worthy to 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 marry you and uh, and it reminded me that when I got married to my ex before I had a red dress you know and it was not really a proper dress because it's so short and it is so red and I have a black hat so it looks like I don't know I don't know but all of you can tell what it means you know a red dress and a black hat <laughs> so when I got when when we got married I could not imagine myself wearing a white dress, you know. Like all of the people I have seen, they are the, the all the ladies I have seen in married or getting married, they all have white dress. So I was like, 
how dare you could marry me? And he was like, I do not need to wait for 10 years or many many more years just to marry you because I know that you are the right woman for me. And I love you. And I said, but how could you love me? You don't even know me yet. We just met each other for one month and you're proposing to me now. And he said that I am ready to, I am ready to understand you. I, I am ready and I am patient to, to, to know you. I, I, will, I want to have you in my life. So he introduced me to his family and I've learned that his family never been to church, never been a, uh, or is not a Christian and he is the one who break the, the cycles of their family. He became a Christian and I'm so thankful to the Lord and and he became he became uh, he became a Christian and now we are living together. And he loved my children. You just wait there. I will show you something. That's our picture. You see? That's amazing. Yeah. One more. And these are my children. That's my son and this is my daughter. Yeah. So, uh, uh, my husband, uh, he's very open and uh, I felt more encouraged now. And even the church had forgiven me, and the friend that and the, the friend that I was talking about was my my best friend. She is the one who got married in 2012, and now a few just few days ago, um, we we talked and seriously we we forgive each other, release forgiveness, and and it felt so good to be free from the bondage of the enemy. So I encourage you all to, to to do not give up because the Lord listens, you know, the Lord listens to prayers and um, and whatever whatever situations you are in right now, I just hope that that God will lead you to righteousness and whatever hurt that you have met before, whatever pain what that had caused you to be miserable. The the first thing that I have learned is that you have to accept that you have done those things. You have to accept that you have sinned. You have to accept that you also um, did those things because you did not know them and you were not aware. If you are willing for a change, if you are willing that the Lord will work in your life, he will not work in you if you just go to the church and you say, All right, Lord, I give up to you. No, that's not God. That's not how God works. You have to search. You have to search yourself. You have to open up your heart to the Lord. You have to be honest to Him. Don't lie to Him. Do not pretend that you are okay. And find people in your church, those who you trust. Find them and speak to them and tell them and confess your sins to them. Because it is written that we must confess, not confess. <laughs> we must confess our sins to one another, and let love prevail. And those of you, even if you know what your brothers or your sisters are doing, do not condemn them. You know, do not condemn them because that's the that's the worst thing I have ever experienced before. When when I've met someone like I've done this and this and this and that and that. And they condemn and like, you're a fool, you're a sinner. No, that's not the way it is. You have to tell, you have to say to that person that, do you want that we can pray? And then just, just stand there because people do not, does not, we don't really need psychologists and psychiatrists. We need one another, you and I. We need one another to encourage one another, to love one another. 
you know, I'm sorry for the psychologists and the psychiatrists and, and those professionals, but but what I am trying to say here is that I'm not trying that you, I'm not saying that you would lose your jobs, but what I'm saying is that Christianity is built in love. God is love. Those who know him have love. And the fruit of love is kindness, joy, and peace. And all of this in Galatians 5.22 and in 1 Corinthians 13.4. Those, those are the meaning of love. You know, so love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast. So I tell you, my brethren, if someone of you are sad or if someone of you are experiencing depression or stress, you can see it in their face because a person who is depressed repeats words they say. A person who is depressed are are very negative. They are pretending in their laughter. They are they are they are putting away. They are putting away their themselves far from many, you know. And sometimes they speak in riddles, you know, like I'm good, but then their face is like numb. You know or or whatever but if people are experiencing horrible stuff in their life stay there beside them pray for them never give up on them because the moment you give up on them you cannot bring their soul to the Lord just let them feel that there is love of God in you you know and um, I encourage also the parents and those who are parents and uh, that uh, Learn to love your children. Learn to encourage them. Learn to speak kind words to them. Kind to, to speak love to them. That, you know, I don't mean that you have to say to your children, I love you every hour. But, I mean, you have to show to them. You have to give time to them. You have to hug them. You have to, to, to tell them their positive side. And encourage them. Correct them, you know. Because God says that, God says that that parents are the guide of, of children. You are the leaders. You are our leader. And we, we children, we have to honor our father. You know that there is a, there is in a, there is a, a, a verse in, a, in Deuteronomy 5, uh, I think, Deuteronomy 5, 516 it says honor your father and your mother doesn't it that's the only thing that is written in ten commandments anywhere or in any churches that you have said but following that is it says as the lord your god has commanded you that your days may be long and that it may be well with you in the land which the lord god is giving you so you see this verse is filled with with blessings Honor your father, honor your mother. So let's let's give honor to our father in heaven and let's give honor to our earthly parents, you know. Even if they are they've become you know, even if they have done many horrible things before, just be patient with them. Show to them, show to them that, that you still love them because because love covers multitude of sins. If you love them you will care for them, you will take care of them, you will not remember what they did to you, but you will forgive them, and you will give them more, you will give them whatever they need, because that's what God says, you know, God will not work in your life, if you will not do those things, and I hope that my testimony is a living witness to every one of you, and I know that one day, one of the people who know me, will see this video also, I expect, I expect that, and I expect more from the Lord, that that all of those who have watched this, I pray that may you be blessed. Father in heaven, thank you so much, O oh God, for the people who have watched this video, O oh God. I pray in the name of Jesus, that may you seek their heart, O oh God, may you open up their hearts, O oh Lord, whatever hurt that has caused them, O oh God, whatever whatever kinds of pains, O oh Lord God, that have hurt their hearts, O oh God, that have caused them wounds, O oh Lord. I pray, O oh God, that they may be healed. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So I command all of you who have been depressed to be healed in the name of Jesus. 
and all of you who have who has illnesses in their body be restored in the name of Jesus and all of you who are happy just be happy in the name of Jesus okay bye God bless you